Grace and peace to you. Our reading for today is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Here ends the reading. I think one of the many challenges of a life of faith is how good we are at compartmentalizing our lives and not realizing how our identity, our morals, our values and beliefs that we truly believe and want to be our guiding principles relate to the things we do in other parts of our lives. Pretty regularly, Christians show up to worship on Sundays, hear of Christ's sacrificial love, hear of how we are to continue Christ's ministry and identity in the world and how we love our neighbor, care for the poor, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the outcast. And then we walk out of the building not even trying to think of what uh, we do and hear and worship and how that relates to the other 167 hours in a week. We worship a God who calls us to love our neighbors, which is everyone, as ourselves. And yet we rarely even have time for our neighbors. We worship a God who welcomes the outcasts, and yet we are more concerned with being part of the in crowd. We worship a God who lifts up the oppressed, and then we go to work in jobs that create oppression, that take advantage of people with little power or knowledge. We worship a God that gives of God's self completely, and we shape our lives around hoarding and acquiring as much as we can for ourselves. Sometimes it's pure hypocrisy that drives this, being completely aware, aware of the tension between the God we worship and who that means we are, and then the way that we behave. But sometimes, often, I think, it's that we haven't even thought enough about it to realize that our behavior doesn't match our values, that our actions create victims, that instead of being a witness to the world of God's love, we are witnesses to the world of its own brokenness. It isn't that these decisions are always clear or easy. It takes a lot of work to live a life consistent with our values. The more we learn about the production and distribution of foods and goods, the more we realize that our habits are destruction to God's good creation. The more we realize how the systems we participate in were created to serve only some and often intentionally make victims of others, the harder it is to find our place and the more we realize we must sacrifice our comforts and wants to give honor and dignity to people who were created in the image of God just like we are. Colossians talks about putting to death the things that are earthly, which means the things that are not of God, things that are inconsistent with a pure life of faith that God wants for us. Fornication, impurity, passion, evil, desire, and greed, also lying, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language. These are all things that are named as uh, things that are earthly that are not of God. That all sounds well and good, putting down those things, until we start to consider how much in the world depends on these things and how much of them we are tied up in. In our baptisms, our lives that were tied up in these things were put to death, except that we know that we still get tripped up in them. We still participate in them. We still sin. And as much as we may want to live a consistent life, we struggle. And pretty quickly, it seems like too much too big of a change for us to accomplish. Which is why I appreciate Martin Luther's talk about sanctification, 
how this work of the Spirit in us to form us more and more to be the people that God creates and calls us to be is a daily dying and rising. Daily dying to our old selves and then rising anew to be who we are in Christ. It's a one step at a time kind of a thing. Luther said, every morning when we wash our faces, we should remember our baptisms. Remember that we've died to sin and risen to new life. And each new day is an opportunity to take one step. God's grace does not exist to weigh us down in guilt, but to lift us up to new life. And I give thanks that that grace comes each and every day. So may we work to make our lives consistent, to have our beliefs and values shape the way that we behave in the world. And may we be formed each new day to be more the people that God has created us to be. Uh, peace to you. Uh, I hope that this is uh, a helpful thought for the day. And uh, if you would like to reach out, uh, you're welcome to do that. And we can continue the conversation. Have a wonderful week and God's peace.